stands to me. Khalid Muhammad, former national representative of uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam. Um, Mr. Muhammad is the man who made uh, so much, uh, so many of the front pages of America's newspapers with uh, a speech at Kane College, which so many people called anti-Semitic and anti uh, a lot of things, at the very least uh, racist. You remember the comment? He picked up uh, the Pope's dress, and let's see what's under that dress. Um, <laughs> Here's what you said uh, about Colin Ferguson, the man who shot a Jamaican, uh, African, a black male who shot six people on the Long Island train. Mr. Muhammad speaks. Where well, they set black inmates up in these jails and penitentiaries, and in particular there in Nassau County, and pulled all the black officers out and the in black inmates so they could jump on Brother Colin Ferguson because they were mad with him for catching the Long Island train and killing all them white folks. I love Colin Ferguson. <laughs> official position so I can say I love him. You love a man who randomly killed six people on a commuter train? I love Colin Ferguson just as much as the masses of white Americans love General Schwarzkopf, General Westmoreland, General Patton, General MacArthur and Eisenhower. America awards her killers, and they get ribbons and stripes and bars. I'm sensitive to the pain and suffering of the loss of life on that train, but I'm one of the rebellious slaves. And so when black people stand up out of pain and suffering and frustration, I understand after 500 years. <laughs> about uh... New York City's race war. Just like elsewhere in the country, this war is carried out by citizens, police, and the judicial system. You heard the name Colin Ferguson be brought up. Colin Ferguson was a Jamaican New Yorker. As the subtitles in the video said, back in the day, in the 1990s, a simpler time, black Americans didn't make any distinctions between black immigrants and FBA. Those distinctions are not necessary 100% of the time, but are very important when it comes to things like reparations, uh, etc. That's just a side note. But the kid that got shot in his head out in Missouri for knocking on the wrong door comes to mind that was an African immigrant or a non-FBA. And his family sure did act like it, didn't they? But back to the topic. Colin Ferguson got six of them. In my opinion, a mentally ill man that represented himself. If th those of you all that were alive, then you remember that fiasco of a trial. We're sitting here like, bruh, you should have got a lawyer. You were still going to prison, but you would have been better off. But we find it interesting that he did this on the Long Island Railroad. Yes, that Long Island where wet dog Daniel Penny Neanderthal comes from. Lots of Neanderthals out there. A lot of them, I would say most of them are tether. They're Jews. They're Italian, Polacks, race soldier Pentaglio, the man that murdered Eric Garner, just walking around free, just walking around. You can tell by his facial features that he is a tether. The more time you spend in New York City, you will be able to distinguish white and black tethers from those that are American population, although all white people are tethers. They're not indigenous to this land, but that's another conversation. So Pentaglio. Just out strolling around, out walking around. I wouldn't suggest doing what Colin Ferguson did because you'll end up like Colin Ferguson. Now, notice they've never, they don't really show Daniel Penny's handcuffs. He's always in a suit. They kind of show him from the waist up. But I understand why Dr. Khalid Muhammad said that he loves Colin Ferguson as the dominant society would love General Norman Schwarzkopf. He was all over TV. He was on Time Magazine. Dude was like incinerating Iraqi children. Not that we should care about them because they participated in African slave trading, but still, 
that's the celebration of violence. I've lived throughout this beautiful country of ours that my ancestors built from New York to Los Angeles, from the Midwest to Alabama. Every single place that I have been, there is an underlying racial war. It's slightly different, but it's all the same. White supremacist ide ideology. That somehow a black person doesn't have the right to breathe free air or have the right to be wrong. You know, you have people, you have black men out here being shot in the back for jaywalking. You have black men having their necks kneeled on over counterfeit bills that were never found. You have guys being choked to death over cigarettes that were never found. The Lucy, I got a Lucy. A loose cigarette is an ATF charge. Only if you're black. Now, apparently strangling a man from behind, that's A-OK. -okay. But have a loose cigarette, it's time to kill. No, this has nothing to do with the law. In New York, the racial war is conducted like this. Most of the white population, which I include Latinos, Asians, Indians, and Arabs in that statement, in that group, the white population, most of them hide and cower behind NYPD. One thing that they work in New York well is the I'm so scared of the black guy thing. I once had a Jewish photographer from the Post or the Daily or one of them taking pictures of me and I said, stop taking pictures of me. I was working as a vendor. And then, you know, my partner with me, uh, one of my family members, we started cursing her out. Get out of here, bitch, all this stuff. She called the police. They showed up deep. They put on the black gloves as soon as they got out of the car. You know what that means if you're in New York. Lucky for us, there was a rather dark, I don't know if he was Dominican or Puerto Rican or what, but he let us go or he didn't arrest us on some black stuff. And he told us, he's like, I have enough to arrest you right now, but I'm not going to do that to you. Okay. So this white woman knew what to do to try to get us harmed, whether that's jailed or shot or beat up in New York. They take the violent crimes that happen on the streets and they apply that to all black people. Now, what it is, is they're scared of the thugged out type dudes. They don't want to fight them. So they pick on people like uh, Jordan Neely or they falsify crimes. They create crimes. People outside of the city don't understand how aggressive New York policing is. And it's not done on principle or on law. It's done based on race. What it is, is in New York City, the black man runs the yard. People get punked out when the brothers come around. Now, I'm talking about a street element here. I'm not talking about your college educated Wall Street, smooth type, dapper suit type brothers. I'm talking about cats that really be getting their money doing certain things. A lot of the time, it's just teenagers and kids doing kid stuff. Like punch people in the back of the head and jacking and robbing. That's not good. But they understand that when it's white people that commit murder, they don't apply that to the entire race. Now, that's white supremacy in a nutshell. So in New York City, again, you're going to have falsification of crimes. I'm so scared. And blaming black people for the actions of other black people, blaming all black people for the actions of other black people, not to mention probably the biggest culprit and one of the biggest elements of warfare of them all are the non-indigenous U.S. citizens or not really U.S. citizens that ran like some female dogs from their home country over here where us black Americans fight against the government. They get behind us. Then they do what they did in their country is they side with white supremacy because there's some punks. Yes, New York is a problem. Honestly, politically speaking, the black black New York is not as strong as it is in other places in the country. I've also lived in Los Angeles and I'll say this. Of all the places I've been, Los Angeles, with the Midwest coming in a, a very close second, the brothers and sisters out there stay on point, and it's one of the only places I've been where I've seen the black people actually feel and act like they are superior to others. Most of the black residents in L.A. migrated there from the South, places like Mississippi, Texas, Arkansas, New Orleans. Hit that thumbs up. The black people in Los Angeles have been free for longer. And there's something they never really discuss. Yes, there were types of slavery going on in L.A., but the black people there have been free for longer. L.A. was actually started in part uh, by there were, there were black people amongst the original founders of the city of Los Angeles. The Black Panthers were founded in California in the Bay Area. The Bloods and the Crips, which were first political organizations, 
were also founded in Los Angeles. The Los Angeles riots got cracking in Los Angeles. Unlike New York City, white people in LA are looked upon with disdain from the black community. They're considered to be weak, dirty, nasty, stinky. Yes, black LA has its share of problems. But again, amongst the strongest I've seen have been in LA. I've also lived in the Midwest, Michigan, Ohio. People there tend to have less money than Los Angeles, but they have the same spirit as LA. Don't forget that the nation of Islam came from the Michigan prison system. Elijah Muhammad, Louis Farrakhan, settled in Chicago. Street organizations like GD, GDN, Peace Stones. They were formed like LA again for political reasons. The G's were formed to kick the Italians out of the south side of Chicago. Now gangs are a problem in these cities. I have no problem myself with street organizations, but I remember when I was in LA, I was in high school and the kid that used to sit next to me in my chair was murdered in a Halloween night gang initiation. It was a famous story. It was in Pasadena to be exact. So I'm not saying that those communities don't have their problems, but then again, every community has their problems. In both of these areas, Southern California and the Midwest, the warfare is carried out via the police. Pullovers, traffic stops. They shot a man for jaywalking in the back in LA, one of them damn Mexicans, a Mexican cop. When I was in Michigan as a young man, I was constantly pulled over for crack taillights, having my car searched. This was during the 1990s. When that bastard Joe Biden and that rapist allegedly Bill Clinton and his alleged lesbian wife calling people super predators in the Midwest, the white women are known to throw themselves at the brothers. This is the basis of warfare, of anti-black white supremacy and a big part of why they wage war on us. Cowardly men that don't have the game to keep their women. Women are naturally attracted to melanin. You can keep that scuzzball albino, I'll take my sister, thank you. I was reading a comment section of this video and some guy said I would have left Kim Porter for J-Lo, talking about Puff Daddy, or P. Diddy. I said, hell no, Kim Porter's way better looking than J-Ho. Be careful with those uh, Spanish, those not really Spanish, Spanish chicks. You have a bag of wrinkles, just like a white woman once they get over the age of 35. I've also lived in the South, places like Kentucky, Virginia, Alabama. The war down there is carried out through in every Southern state that I've been in. They go out of their way to speak to you and treat you like you're not a man, no matter how old you are. They'll do things like card you for things that they should only card an 18 year old for. Talk to you in crazy tones of voices. This is all to incite you to attack. Now they carry more guns than a little bit down South. This is why they talk. However, they also know that if you react and I do something to you, something strange, and even if I get away with it, meaning if I get away from the scene, now I've caught a case. Now they can put you in jail. Now they do the traffic stops and all of that stuff as well. The police are the police no matter where you are. But what I'm saying is I found subtle nuances in the racial war game no matter where I've been. It's all the same, but it's all different. Again, in the Midwest, they don't want you in certain neighborhoods. Now they can't come to our neighborhood. My grandmother in Cleveland, you see a white person in her neighborhood, you throw rocks at them. New York City is all about money, but not only money, similar to LA, New York is about image. When it comes to the entertainment business, New York is LA's daddy. Yes, LA is richer, younger, better looking, but where'd you get your game from? New York has the theater Culture. This is why everybody there talks like they're a theater actor with their chest. But it's also about image. And the image of the black man on the street being tougher than everybody else, which everybody knows in that city. They have to make sure that they extinguish that image because straight haired, pale skinned people feel inferior next to melanated people. The darker you are in America, the better you are considered to be able to fight. This is what that Daniel Penny murder is all about. A lot of straight hair, pale skins as the three people in this picture. 
clam up, shut up, and give it up when the brothers come around. What Penny is doing is a classic New York trick of he was so scared of the big black person. Because when you watch the local news in New York, it's almost all black people. When you go to Central Booking, been there about six times, it's almost always black people with a couple of Puerto Ricans sprinkled in there and a few Dominicans. Maybe an Asian woman that didn't have her vendor's license or something like that. The media in New York is extremely powerful and extremely controlled by white supremacists. Make that Jewish white supremacists. This is a common agreed upon strategy in New York. The scary black guy. Because what I'm saying is you'll see these subway muggings, these attacks. A lot of times they're teenagers, they're, they're gangs and stupid stuff. A lot of times they're mentally ill. A lot of times they're just flat out creepy, crazy people that are going around groping women, committing rapes. One of the most brutal rapes I saw was a Dominican dude in Washington Heights that broke into an 80-year-old woman's house and raped her. You got to be a sick SOB to do that. But what I'm saying is they use all of these images of these crimes that are committed by all types, but they only demonize the black people as an excuse to commit violent violence. Notice that in the comment sections in these Daniel Penny videos, it's a bunch of NYPD cops that I suspect are all in there talking about. He had 40 arrests. They use the arrests. They didn't say convictions. They said arrests. So in New York, like I said, policing is very aggressive. They'll arrest you for nothing over and over and over. So they can say, we've had 22 arrests for vendors in New York. Therefore, we need to pass this law. You see where we're going with that? Like I said, New York is also about money. They understand in order for straight hair, pale skin, genetically recessive people to be successful, they need a legal advantage because they don't have a natural advantage as black people do. This is why you are seeing them excusing the murder of Jordan Neely. This is why rap literally used to be illegal. Breakdancing, illegal. And one thing you'll pick up in New York is how vigorously and out loudly these straight haired, pale skinned people and even some coons support NYPD, an organization of criminals. To put it plain and simple, white New Yorkers are physically scared of black New Yorkers like the cowards that they are. All of them act as if there's just these horrible, it's just so scary on the subway. It's really not. The subway ain't really nothing. Yeah, an Asian guy might get pushed on the tracks every now and then. Yeah, there's a lot of mentally ill homeless people down there. But it's not really that dangerous. Unless you're a black person, like that uh, Jamaican woman that got stabbed in her neck by some white supremacist. Then you have the immigrant problem, and that includes non-FBA black immigrants. They're just so happy to be here. Especially the People from those islands down there. You know where the white man takes all their money? The, the, the United States government takes all their money. So they've already been punked out. They've already tapped out. So by the time they get to New York, where they have a bunch of other cowardly immigrants that ran too, then they can realize their dreams of being accepted by the white race. And what that means is you act violent towards black people. You notice there was a tether that looked Puerto Rican or Dominican on the train that pulled a man's hand down that was trying to take a chokehold off of his neck. Are you serious? Why has he not been arrested? I'll tell you why. Because this is war. Compared to the black community in New York, the whites, the Latinos, the Chinese, the Indians, the Akinim in the store are weak. But what they have is the system of white supremacy behind them. In particular, NYPD the largest, most funded police department in the country. Like most other police departments in this country carry out brazen, violent murders of black citizens year after year. So when you see a situation like Colin Ferguson and why he decided to get at some people on the Long Island Railroad, yes, that Long Island, where this bastard in front of us comes from. We don't know why he did that. But when you check the race soldiers that have come from Long Island and the acts of crime that they have committed against black people, I ain't saying that I condone it, but I comprehend. So don't forget, in New York, the populace dwells very closely together. So people tend to be a little bit more boisterous, a little bit more look at me. 
a little more ego. Why? Because you can't get punked out in front of all these people on the streets. Lots of yelling, lots of wolf tickets. Some people do back it up now. When you think of New York City, you think of hip-hop, you think of rap. The truth of the matter is straight hair, pale skins, in particular the tethers, feel unmanly, feel inferior, and are jealous of the worldwide recognition that black New Yorkers get, otherwise known as white supremacy. And oh, this same type of, these, these same types of sentiments are carried out in the South, the Midwest, and the West Coast as well. well. And of course, a different set of punishments and rules for Daniel Penny, who was way undercharged by that step and fetch house Negro mayor, uh, excuse me, uh, DA, uh, Alvin Bragg, and given the endorsement by the step and fetch house Negro handkerchief head, Eric Adams, and that beach that I can't even pronounce her name, I don't even care, that ugly Neanderthal up there in Albany. The government of New York City and New York State will assist a white supremacist in committing acts of violence and or crimes against black people in New York, otherwise known as anti-black warfare. Let me know what you think. This is Raw Stacks. Thank you for that settlement.